The Golden State Warriors are in a complete disarray right now, losing games badly, barely beating a team like the Detroit Pistons, losing at home, on the road, you name it. They're currently 17-19, and 19, 11th in the Western Conference at the time of this recording. You have players frustrated and unhappy with their roles, Draymond Green unhinged, acting like he's a member of the WWE out there, Klay Thompson insecure because he knows his best days are behind him, and this is a Warriors team that was thought to be making one last title push this season. Everyone was calling it the last dance of their dynasty era with the core three of Steph, Clay, and Draymond all getting older, Clay on the final year of his contract. Like, even if you didn't think the Warriors were going to be legit title contenders like myself, you still thought they would at least be a competitive team, one of the top teams in the Western Conference. But now, with over a third of the way season through, it's very possible if the Warriors keep their current roster intact for the rest of the season, they very well could miss the playoffs. Yeah, I get it. Seeds 4 through 12 in the West are all close in the standings. Only five games separate the 12th and the 4th seed. But the difference is the Warriors have a very dysfunctional roster. They don't fit well together. You have these conflicting timelines of trying to win now to maximize Steph, still playing at a high level. But at the same time, also trying to develop your young talent. They don't have enough scoring or at least a consistent and reliable number two option like they've had in years past. Their defense is terrible. Bottom 10 in the NBA. Like, you get it. This team isn't going anywhere. And for a team that that was hoping to make one last title push or at least to remain competitive before Steph starts to decline, this is a team that is desperate to make changes, a team that absolutely needs to shake up their roster to try and save their season. And you're probably thinking, why are we talking about the Warriors here? Isn't this a Bulls channel? Well, in come the Chicago Bulls and capitalizing on the Warriors' desperation and trying to salvage what looks like a lost season. And yes, I'm talking about trading for Zach Levine. What does an ideal trade look like that would make sense for both parties? Well, let's talk about it. But first, the Bulls have a game later today against the struggling Charlotte Hornets. Hopefully they can get another win. And going into the game, you know I always like making predictions. And if you like making predictions on player stats, then you know Underdog Fantasy is the best place to do it. For those that aren't familiar with Underdog, let me tell you about the app and my personal favorite that I use on the app, NBA Pick'ems. With Pick'ems, you can pick higher or lower on player stats and win money based on the ones you get right. You pick higher or lower, you can win up to 20 times your money in a single night. If you do five Pick'ems and you get them all right. If you think Kobe White is going to score more than 17 points tonight, which based on how he's been playing more recently, could very well likely be the case, select higher and you can win some money. And guys, they're offering viewers of this channel an exclusive offer. If you use the promo code BULLCENTRAL, you'll get your first deposit doubled up to $100. Who doesn't want free money? It's really that easy. It's what I've always been saying. It's also a great way to support the channel as well. I'll leave a link to the site and the code in the description if you're interested and let me know what picks you guys end up making. Now, we've been talking about trades, trade scenarios, trade rumors for a while now, ever since it came out that both Zach Levine and the Bulls would be open to moving him in a trade. We've been firing up the trade machine for a while. We've seen some great trades from people, some ridiculous ones, and everything in between. But if the days go on and Zach still remains with the Bulls, it seems more and more likely that this is going to be a scenario in which the Bulls will have to wait until closer to the trade deadline to see which teams are out there that are going to be desperate enough to make a big splash that they would potentially overpay for Zach. Because all the reports recently have been saying that there really isn't a market for Zach Levine. Teams are not interested in trading for this guy. And while I still think that's BS to say that there is no market for him because there's always going to be a market for an all-star caliber player who is a highly efficient scorer and in his prime, it's not like we're dealing with a player who is in his mid-30s here, it may not be the type of return the Bulls expect, but there is not going to be a situation in which no teams are going to be interested in Zach Levine if it means they can get him for pennies in the dollar. Obviously, as Bulls fans, we hope that's not the case and that the Bulls will be able to get a decent return for him, but I'm more so just saying that some team would bite on Zach if it means they don't have to give up a lot to get him. Now, a few outlets and writers have mentioned that the Warriors are a team to watch out for in making a play at Zach Levine. I believe they referred to the Warriors as a dark horse to get Levine because everyone seems to be of the belief that it's going to be the Lakers who land Zach. And while I still don't think Zach really makes the Warriors that much better, they would be a better team and he would be a solid second option behind Steph Curry, which they need. Getting Zach is not going to suddenly make them title contenders though, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Warriors think they're getting Zach Levine and that suddenly changes their fortunes. So 
what would a trade look like? Well, I've got a few, but I want to start with what I personally think would be the most ideal, realistically ideal, that is, for both sides. Because we would love it if the Warriors sent us all of their young players and three first round picks, but that's not going to happen. But I do think something like this could work. Again, depending on how desperate the Warriors actually get. And the trade is actually pretty simple. The Bulls would get Chris Paul for salary matching purposes and Jonathan Kaminga for Zach Levine. And I know right away some are going to say I'm out of my mind if I think that's the best return the Bulls can get for Zach Levine. And I believe I suggested a trade a while back that also included Chris Paul. And I had so many people in the comments saying Chris Paul makes no sense for the Bulls. Why would we ever bring in more old players when this team needs to start thinking about their future? Oddly enough, trading for Chris Paul is actually keeping the Bulls future more in mind than by adding Kaminga. Including Chris Paul in a trade does not mean that this is a play to try and get the Bulls to win now. Chris Paul is 38 years old. He's on the brink of retirement. But what people forget is one, Chris Paul is effectively on an expiring deal. I know he still technically has a year left on his contract after the season, but it's not guaranteed. Only this year is guaranteed. The Bulls wouldn't keep Paul beyond this season. This would effectively remove Zach Levine's max salary money off of their books for the future, freeing up all that cap space, which is what makes this important for their future. But more importantly, you know who was one of Kobe White's biggest mentors, a big advocate since he was a kid and one of his friends? Yes, Chris Paul. And even though CP3 is washed, he still can be a great mentor, a great leader for Kobe White in helping his overall development and progression, which the Bulls could greatly benefit from to have one of the greatest point guards to ever play the game, be on the bench and mentoring slash coaching Kobe White on a nightly basis, and not even just Kobe White, but really for the rest of the team. So no guys, I'm not suggesting that the Bulls get Chris Paul as this has been all-star to get the Bulls to the playoffs, but more so to get Zach's money off of their books for the future and have a smart, savvy veteran point guard for Kobe White to learn from. And then, of course, Jonathan Kaminga. I mean, that's really the prize, if you want to call it that. Well, I still have my doubts on whether Kaminga is going to be an all-star level player in this league. He has shown a lot of flashes of his potential at such a young age. Super athletic, fast, solid on offense, size and strength that the Bulls need, and he's a young player that they could use as a piece to develop for the future. And I'm throwing in Kaminga because it has come out publicly that he hasn't been very pleased with Steve Kerr and losing faith in him as a coach that can properly develop and utilize him to the best of his strengths. And if Kaminga and Steve Kerr don't have a good relationship or it's a relationship that's beyond repair, you likely could see Kaminga on the move. Now, I'm sure there will be comments about not including any picks in this deal. Again, you have to remember Zach's value. His trade market around the league is not very high. Getting a young stud like Kaminga and salary relief for Chris Paul is actually a solid return. Like, we have to expect that the Bulls are more than likely not going to win this trade. But even getting a younger player with potential is beneficial in my eyes than just moving him for a bunch of average players and expiring contracts. That said, though, I do have a couple of other trade packages that would include picks, in fact, multiple picks, and that's because the Bulls are also attaching Alex Caruso to the deal. You guys have heard me say before, as much as I'm in the minority in this opinion, I don't believe that it makes sense to trade Alex Caruso unless you get a team that is willing to overpay for him, like above and beyond his value. Because while yes, I get that it doesn't make sense to keep Caruso if you don't see this team winning anytime soon, and Caruso's trade value is also at an all-time high. I do think, though, that there there is something to be said about creating the right culture, winning mentality, and a strong leader and voice in the locker room. And that's what you get in Alex Caruso. There is value to having a player like that, whether you're competing for a title, rebuilding, or somewhere in between. But in a trade like this, and also knowing that a team like the Warriors have expressed interest in Caruso, a player that would immediately upgrade their defense and their depth overall, I do think a team like that would overpay for him. So in this scenario, we would have the Bulls trading Zach and Caruso for Klay Thompson, Kaminga, and two first round picks in 2026 and 28. The reason I included Thompson here is you actually need his higher salary to get the trade to be successful if you are also including Alex Caruso. Also, even though Clay is a bit washed himself and wildly inconsistent, he's still a great catch and shoot shooter and something the Bulls could use in a player who plays more off the ball alongside DeMar DeRozan. And again, expiring contracts, so the Bulls don't have to keep him around beyond this season and they get off of Zach's contract for the future. They get Kaminga, who we already talked about, as a young piece they can build with, and two first round picks. And mind you, those picks could be very juicy considering by 26 and 28, this could very well be a rebuilding Warriors team with Curry likely in retirement by that point. So yes, this would be a deal I would do if you're including Alex Caruso because it would set the Bulls up very nicely for the future. Now, if you don't want Clay, but you still want Kaminga in the two picks, then there is also this one where you would have Chris Paul, but also Gary Payton. I don't like this deal as much because Payton has been very injury prone and still has one more year left on his contract after this, but Payton is 
actually a solid defensive player, big time hustler like Caruso, but older and not as strong of a shooter as someone like Caruso is. I still would take this because I'm more focused on the two first round picks than Kaminga, but would prefer something like Clay Thompson to just have one expiring contract. And also Clay is a bigger name who still has some gas left in the tank and provides the bull shooting, which they need. So anyway, do I think any of these trades would be likely to happen? Probably not. Maybe the first one, but I say probably not because I still think the Bulls are going to overvalue Zach like they have in the past and not strike on a deal if they think they're being lowballed. But let me know what you guys think of these trades. Let me know in the comments. As always, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.